Good day, this is Motorcycle Breakdown and today we're going to be breaking down motorcycle frames. In this video I'll share all the knowledge that I learned about frames. It was quite hard to research it all, but after looking through different sources I managed to put together something that makes some decent sense. If we put it simply, the frame's job is to hold the motorcycle together. When you ride your bike through those twisties, the frame is taking quite a lot of abuse. Your frame needs to be able to withstand all of those forces that occur when you are riding. The frame starts at the steering head going through the bike all the way to the swing arm, holding the front and rear wheels together with the engine. Then we'll go into frame design, I'll explain what SRLC means and also why we need to follow that. I'll explain to you what is a subframe and also tell you about the evolution of frames throughout history. And then I'm gonna follow through with the top 8 frame designs. What is a subframe? Well, it is an extension of the mainframe, mainly with the purpose of carrying the rider and their luggage. With the subframe you only need to focus on the weight that it's gonna carry. You don't really need to look into all of the forces that happen while you are riding, because the mainframe absorbs all of them. Evolution of the frame. It's kind of funny, but bicycles are actually at the core of motorcycles. Right at the end of the 19th century, some gentlemen thought they would just slap an engine on a bicycle. And that's how the motorcycle was created. This kind of frame worked because at the time the engines were able to only produce roughly 30 km per hour. So you didn't really need to worry about frame design too much back then. But times have changed and as engines got more and more powerful, the frame needed to follow them. Steel was the main material in use for frames all the way until the 1980s. Then aluminium got kind of introduced, but it is still kind of equal between them. They're both good for certain things, but how it's steel comes out on top. Then you can of course use more special materials for racing, and those would be carbon fiber, magnesium and titanium. Those frames are really light and they are really expensive. Through the need for speed on racetracks, the frame evolved what it is now today. Really well optimized design for high speeds. But that doesn't mean that the old designs are useless. They are still used on a lot of bikes nowadays. Frame design. Now let's look into why the frame needs to be SRLC. Strong, rigid, light and cheap. Number one, strong. Well, basically, if you crash, you don't want your frame to fall apart. Strength ensures that the frame stays together even in harsh crashes. The reason why we use metals on frames is because we need that strength and metals are perfect for this. Number two, rigid. Rigidness is important because the forces while riding and braking are really high. We need the frame to be able to not bend when those forces occur. For that, we use metals why do we need the frame to be light? Well, it's very simple. The lower the weight of the bike, the faster it can go. This is why we use hollow tubes on motorcycles. And also here you can see why the aluminium is used, because it is really light compared to steel. Number four, cheap. Well, everyone wants speed, power, and they don't really focus on the frame. So manufacturers have a really low budget to make frames. That is why the frame needs to be affordable to make. Engine as a stressed member. The frame comes in two flavors, either with the engine as a stressed member or not. Here, if you choose the engine as a stressed member, you'll have a more rigid structure of the frame, resulting in better performance of the motorcycle. But if you want to have the engine as a stressed member, you're going to have to mount it metal on metal, which means that the vibrations are going to go throughout the whole bike. The other way to do it would be to not use the engine as a stressed member. Here, you lose some of the rigidity, but you can compensate for that with more tubes. The advantage of this one is going to be that you can rubber mount the engine, reducing vibrations throughout the whole motorcycle. And also, if the engine is not undergoing all of those forces, it can increase its lifetime. Frame types. As I said, there's a lot of designs out there, and we are going to look at the top 8 frame designs. Number 1. Diamond frame. As you might have guessed, the diamond frame is not actually made out of diamonds. The name is taken from a bicycle design, basically taking those two triangles and making a diamond shape with them. This design had to be changed a little bit for the motorcycle use. So the way they did that is by duplicating it and putting it next to the engine on both sides. This way the engine is a lot more stable in there and also is used as a stressed member of this frame. Now let's look at how the frame is designed. You have the steering head. From there you get a down tube leading down to the engine. In front of it it connects to the engine holding it in place. Then you have the main tube going above the engine, all the way down to the swing arm, connecting to the swing arm and the engine. 
There can also be a small pipe leading through the bottom, but this pipe doesn't need to be too strong since the engine is used as a stressed member. These three example bikes use the diamond frame. The Yamaha Phaser, the Suzuki Slingshot, and the Honda CBR 250R. Number two, cradle frame. Very similar to the diamond frame, but here the main difference is that the engine is not in use as a stressed member, meaning that you have to add a pipe below the engine. Here you can make the pipe a little bit thicker than on some of the diamond frames so that it can actually take all of the forces. There is different types of cradle frames. We mainly differentiate single cradle, double cradle and duplex cradle. It is pretty simple. Single cradle means that there is one cradle below the engine. Double cradle means that the downbeat tube extends into two cradles. And the duplex cradle frame is gonna be that there is two down tubes and two cradles, sometimes two main tubes above, creating two loops which are connected between each other and not using the engine as a stress member. This frame is amazing for off-road bikes because the engine will not take any of the damage when the frame takes a hit. Also, because of the cradles, you can mount a bash plate to it, meaning that if you hit something which would pierce the engine, the bash plate can take the hit instead. This frame is going to be used on adventure bikes because it's really good for off-road, as I said. This frame has a really good mid-range price because it doesn't use any special materials and the manufacturing is rather simple. For the double cradle frame, you're gonna have the Suzuki TS50ER. And then one of the most important duplex cradle bikes is gonna be the Norton Manx. Number three, backbone frame. This frame is actually pretty simple. This uses one thick tube going behind the engine, connecting the steering head and the swing arm. Here you have to use smaller engine because the frame is not gonna be able to handle that much weight. If the engine is on the heavier side, it is going to be used as a stressed member. But if you use a light engine, you can get away without using it as a stressed member. This frame is very cheap and usually found on small commuter bikes. As an example for this frame, we're going to go with the Honda CB600F Hornet. This frame is mainly going to be using steel, as are the other two before. Number four, underbone frame. Basically, this one is going to be used only on scooters. It is designed for them. This one is the polar opposite of the backbone frame. Basically, the main tube goes under the engine instead of above it. This allows for that nice space for your feet on the scooter. Scooters are really common, so this is going to be one of the most common frames out there. This one is going to be very, very cheap because of the large production volumes. Number five, pinnier frame. It is also called Beam or Twin Spark. This is one of the most influential designs that happened in history. It allowed motorcycles to go even faster than before. Here, two metal beams wrap around the engine, going around it all the way to the swing arm from the steering head, connecting those two points very close to each other and allowing for really good rigidity and controllability of the motorcycle. These beams are made out of pressed metals. That's gonna be steel or aluminium. This frame is mainly going to be used by sports bikes because of those characteristics that I talked about. The example bikes for this one are going to be the Honda CBR1000RR and the Ducati Panigale V4. Number six, trellis frame. This one uses short tubes welded into triangles, forming a mesh structure, allowing for really good rigidity. This one is going to come in a bit heavier than the aluminum per meter frame since it uses steel. But, since you use those triangles, there is a lot of gaps in between them, reducing the weight. Here the frame follows the same premise as the perimeter frame and it will also use the engine as a stressed member. Designing the trellis frame is not too easy, because you have to account for all of those angles and their forces and everything. It is pretty hard to calculate everything, so the cost of the design is gonna be pretty high. But once you have the design, you can make it at a pretty good price. The leading manufacturers of this frame are Ducati and KDM. They use it on a lot of their motorcycles. I would say this is one of the best looking frames. It can make a bike look amazing if used correctly. Number seven, monocoque frame. Monocoque, so what does that actually mean? Well, it's pretty simple. You take the plastic bodywork of a motorcycle and you make it out of metal using that structure as a frame. The monocoque frame is exclusively used on racing bikes, but sometimes you can find some rare examples of street legal bikes with the monocoque frame. Because you use the frame as the bodywork, you also need to make sure that it's aerodynamic, increasing the difficulty of manufacturing. To manufacture this frame, you're gonna need some special tools and machinery that really increases the price. Since you're not gonna be making a lot of them, 
that also increases the price factor, making this one of the most expensive frames you can get. There is also a distinction of semi monocoque frames that is made because you can combine the monocoque frame with some other frame designs, making it semi monocoque. Most monocoque bikes usually are not fully monocoque because you need to add some stuff in because sometimes it is actually really hard to make it fully monocoque. I'll just give you a few examples of the monocoque frame, the Kawasaki Ninja ZX12R and the Kawasaki Ninja ZX14 and also Ducati made a 1199 Panigale. Number 8, breast frame. The breast frame is not going to be popular at all. It is basically just stamped out of metal sheets, making it a semi monocoque structure. Here you can use it in combination with other frames as well, but the main difficulty of making this is that you are going to have a pretty bulky structure, making the bike look really fat, and also you're very limited with how you can make this frame actually be structurally sound. These frames are not going to be very common on motorcycles. As an example for this one, the Honda Super Cup it is a really popular motorcycle. It is kind of small, but I think it's fine. This one uses it. Other bikes with this frame aren't too good. So I would say this frame design is kind of bad. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and subscribe down below and also hit the like button because I'm going to be coming in with more of these kind of videos and you can't miss them, right? You want to learn more about motorcycles. So go ahead and click down there. Also right next to me here, there is the playlist of this series and the next video in the series. Go ahead and watch those if you want to learn more about motorcycles. And this is going to be it for the video. See you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.